I, I just think that Josh can do more, and I think he's better at playing the game. Stop the cap. <laughs> I'm a big advocate for that, because I think that you do need yeah. some superstars around you. Yep. Superstars but he's around showing you. me the A, but man. He's showing me the you A, man. Need... You don't need it. Stop. Show me the A, man. You don't need it. What do you mean by that? Show me the A, man. Uh, you don't need it. Show me the A, man. You don't need it. Three days later. Yeah. But when you watch the Bills, I don't really see that. I see a guy, Josh Allen, who's probably playing the best football out of anybody in football right now. But he needs help. I need a, a superstar wide receiver when guys can't get open. <laughs> Ravens flock, I'm back to back. I'm back with another one today. Today I got Tom. We have to acknowledge this because, again, year after year, even though we are in the seventh year of Lamar's career, we are still constantly being bombarded with nonstop anti Lamar propaganda meant to try to gaslight us into thinking that Lamar Jackson is not one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time. Yeah, I said it. See, when I first got on YouTube, when I well, when I first started doing Ravens videos, when I first made this channel just for the Ravens content, the reason I got inspired by there was a guy, he doesn't make videos anymore, but his name was Ryan, the regular Ravens fan. And one of my favorite, whenever he used to defend Lamar, one of my favorite things he used to say was, trust your eyes. And clearly, the media thinks the general public is too stupid to trust their eyes. Now, what am I talking about? Because I'm kind of rambling. I want to get to the point here. So, I mentioned in the last video that a lot of fans of other teams, as well as the media, they have a very ridiculous obsession with Lamar Jackson even though Lamar's a very quiet low-key kind of guy for whatever reason he's a very polarizing figure and they look for every opportunity to try to tear Lamar Jackson down especially when it comes to trying to uplift whoever the media wants to be their new golden boy, whoever they want, the, whoever the media wants to be, their face of the NFL. It's a clear bias, obviously. But when these same quarterbacks go head to head against Lamar and get outplayed, and the and the Ravens win, all these same fans and all these people in the media they start flip flopping and making all these excuses. After the fact, the perfect example is this new FS1 show, The Facility, with Acho and Shady and, and the rest of them, where they did an entire segment just on Friday. And it wasn't just them. It was, a people, it was a bunch of people all across the internet, but they're just the best example, right? They did an entire segment on Friday talking about how they trust Josh Allen more than Lamar. And they took a bunch of shots at Lamar while giving, while simultaneously giving Lamar these backhanded compliments. You know, doing a bad job of masking their obvious hatred for them. And to be honest with you, half the time when they, when when people like this in the media, when they take these shots at Lamar, they don't even say it with confidence. When these Bills YouTubers or Chiefs YouTubers or all these YouTubers of all these other fan bases, when they take these shots, they don't even sound confident. I see the fear in their eyes. They're threatened. They are scared. Play with the best team around him, in previous years at least. But despite that, he has constantly done the most with less. They the these shows went on and on saying they trust Josh Allen more, saying he's the best player in football. Oh my gosh, Joshy, 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 blah, blah, blah. And now, well, before I even get to that, even them making this argument was flat out ridiculous. Because what were they basing this argument on? They were basing this argument on the fact that Josh had three good games where he finally didn't throw a pick and three he finally went three games in a row without throwing an interception and all of a sudden he now y'all feel confident to start pushing this agenda again again 
See, for the past five years, really since Stephon Diggs came to Buffalo, I know he's not there anymore, but ever since he came to Buffalo, the media has been so thirsty to try to crown prematurely. They try to crown Josh, the new king in the NFL, the new best player in football, the Bills, the new best team in the NFL. But then when games like this happen, now all of a sudden they making excuses. Now, all of a sudden, they're talking about he needs help. But I thought but I thought he was so much better. I thought he didn't need help. I thought they didn't need digs. That's what I was saying a week ago. And it's, you know, j- just to circle back real quick, it, 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 it's crazy that they tried to say that he was the best player in football now because he finally went three games in a row without throwing an interception. And that was really it. It's pretty much that combined with the fact that he had seven touchdowns this in the, his first three games. That's all it took for y'all to try to feel confident enough to say that he's better than everybody else. Are you crazy? But then the ironic part is they're acting like these same media people are acting like Lamar's having a terrible passing season. Meanwhile, Lamar's has more passing yards and more rushing yards than Josh Allen up until this point. They uh, people were taking shots last week and saying, "Oh, Lamar, um, Josh had four touchdowns in a game, and Lamar only had three all season." Okay, cool. They went head to head. Josh Allen had zero touchdowns. He put up a donut, and Lamar Jackson went out and put three touchdowns. But now they don't want to talk about stats. When the stats are in Lamar's favor, they don't want to talk about it. When it's t- when you put things into context. And realize that the reason that the Bills were three and zero were because they played sorry teams that aren't as physical. All of a sudden, you realize, well, even though the Bills are still good, even though Josh Allen is still good, they weren't these world beaters that the media was trying to hype them up to be. They kept people kept running their mouths, clowning Stephon Diggs, acting like they didn't need him. Look, at the end of the day. At the end of the day, Josh, we all know before Josh got Stephon Diggs, he was going nowhere fast. It don't matter what a Bills fan says. They were just hyping up um Allen and saying that he didn't need weapons. He does so much with less. And they were acting like Josh Allen was the first quarterback in NFL history to put up decent numbers with um below average um uh, help with below average with this below average supporting cast and it's laughable because Lamar Jackson has been doing that for his entire career essentially and y'all never bring that up y'all never try to acknowledge that to put that in this proper context y'all never want to talk they these people they never want to talk about it to this day Zay Flowers is the best receiver Lamar has played with. And again, no offense to Zay. Zay is Zay is very solid. He's very good. But, you know, let's be realistic about Zay's ceiling. Like Zay, if we're being honest, Zay is more realistically a number two. He's not, you know, I I, I and I'm not just saying that because he's not like the because he's like a, a smaller receiver. I'm just saying in general, when you watch him play, it's like he he's good. But He's not that true number one that's gonna be in that upper echelon of the of the league, most likely. He's gonna like his ceiling is more so a guy like his ceiling is to be maybe become a guy like Devontae Smith. And look, that's still a high ceiling. That's still a really nice place to be. That's it. Look, Devontae Smith has had a good career so far. He's put up a couple thousand yard seasons. But is he the number one in Philly? No. And I'm just making that point. I'm not making that point to to disrespect Zay, obviously, but I'm just making that point to say we still have never seen Lamar play alongside like a dominant receiver who could go out and catch almost anything and make something out of nothing and block, you know, all of that. We've never seen that. And still, regardless of that, we've still watched Lamar go out here, not make any excuses and go out and put up multiple MVP seasons, win 75% of his games, break countless records, not just running, but also passing. For all the casuals that don't realize it, Lamar Jackson is currently tied with Tom Brady for most games in NFL history with a perfect passer rating. 
And for the people that don't realize how hard it is to even have one game with a perfect passer rating, Patrick Mahomes to this day has zero games with a perfect passer rating. Uh, went on, I went on a tangent there, but still, back to the main point here. People wonder why Lamar wins MVP and games like this against the Bills. This is exactly why. Y'all remember last year, all the hype Brock Purdy was getting? All the hype that Brock Purdy was getting. And people were acting like he was better than Lamar and he's this and he's that. And then they go head to head. Two good defenses. And guess what? Lamar picked apart that top tier defense in San Francisco. Whereas Purdy collapsed. The same thing happened in this game. But now people are making excuses and saying, well, oh, Lamar ain't really do much. Um, He was carried by Henry and the, um, the Bills defense isn't really that good. Listen, y'all weren't saying that a week ago. Y'all weren't saying that on Friday. Y'all weren't saying that on Saturday. Now y'all making excuses. This is sad to see. This is really sad. They're trying to downplay the situation. They're trying to add, they're trying to bring in uh, more um, context to the situation and say, oh, well, Josh needs help. Y'all weren't saying he needed help two weeks ago or a week ago. Y'all weren't saying that. But now y'all saying he needs help. And oh, this Ravens roster is just so much more talented. Bro, prior to this game, we were giving up 315 passing yards a game. And we were giving up 25 points a game. We quite literally had, prior to this game, we had one of the worst performing defenses in football, especially one of the worst passing defenses in football. And guess what? Mr. Allen, uh, look, and Josh is still a good quarterback, but the fact of the matter is when he faced real pressure, all of a sudden he couldn't handle it. Now, if the roles were reversed, they would have been clowning Lamar Jackson. They would have been torching him, but they want to try to make excuses and bring more context into the conversation to try to make him look better because they, they don't want him to look too bad. You saw this a few days ago with um, Joe Burrow. Joe Burrow and the Bengals are 0-3. And they're making excuses for Joe saying, oh, well, you know, Joe's playing well, but the defense is letting him down. You know how many games Lamar has played lights out and the defense completely folded? Do we have to, as Ravens fans, we know. How many times have we watched games like the Cowboys game last week where we, we had a 22-point lead and we almost blew a 22-point lead in one quarter because the defense folded? Y'all remember the Miami Dolphins game two years ago? We had a 28-point lead. Lamar had 300 yards passing, 100 yards rushing, four touchdowns. He completed like 80% of his passes. We had 38 points, and the defense still folded. We blew a 28-point lead in one quarter. But when games like that happen, do they bring that up to defend Lamar? Of course not. If we lose games, do they bring up the context of the game? Of course not. They just say Lamar got to do better and they, he's playing bad. And that's another thing. Prior to this week, they were gaslighting Ravens fans. They were gaslighting us like crazy. Lamar's been playing well all year. That's not debatable. Lamar's been playing well all year. Our defense has been struggling. Our O-line has been struggling. But Lamar himself has been on point the entire year. But they kept trying to deny it and downplay it and say, well, and they kept trying to use us losing games as a way to try to distract people from Lamar's actual numbers and say, well, nah, he's he's not playing well. When in reality, that's not really the case. But again, when the when stat when it's somebody like Burrow or Josh Allen, they want to make excuses. They want to bring more information in to try to give context and try to defend these guys. They don't do that for Lamar. They don't talk about, they don't put, even it used, the best example is when you think about the playoffs. When you think about the playoffs, there's so much context that needs to be added to the Ravens' playoff history in the past four years, five years with under Lamar Jackson that the media doesn't acknowledge. 
For best example, in 2019, when we lost to the Titans, in that game, Lamar Jackson had 354 passing yards and 146 rushing yards. He had 500 yards of offense by himself. No quarterback has put up that much passing yards and rushing yards in the same game in NFL history, and they want to ignore it. Mind you, that's the same game where our receivers dropped like eight, nine passes. If our receivers catch even half of those passes, not only do we win, but Lamar would have had close to 500 yards just throwing. But the media doesn't want to bring that context into it. They don't want to talk about how our defense that in that game against the Titans that year. How uh, Derrick Henry at that time was in his prime. He was throwing touchdowns. He was running in for touchdowns. He was he was catching um, passing touchdowns. He was unstoppable, and our defense had nothing to stop him. They don't want to talk about that. They don't want to bring that up. But when Joe Burrow comes up short, they want to talk about, oh, poor Joe, this isn't fair. His defense, oh, no, his defense isn't helping him. Oh, this isn't right. We shouldn't, we shouldn't critique him. His defense, just crying, crying. They out here crying for this man. But they don't want to bring up context when it comes to Lamar. They say Lamar lost to Josh Allen in the playoffs. Yes, technically that's true, but they don't want to remind people that Lamar didn't finish that game because halfway through the game, he got a concussion. But that's neither here nor there. I've, I've ranted longer than I intended to. The point I'm trying to make is Lamar's playing well. The media can't handle it. Lamar's a future Hall of Famer. The media and the public can't handle it. Lamar's the best player in the league. The media can't handle it. He's the most dangerous in the league. The media can't handle it. He's done the most with less. The media and the general public, they can't handle it. He's that guy. We're going to look back at, listen, listen, we're going to look back. Do you understand that in about 10 to 15 years, we're going to look back at this and we're going to be like, wow, Lamar Jackson really did all of that. Unfortunately, Lamar's, he's one of those players where while he's playing, everybody's going to constantly hate him and look for reasons to scrutinize him and try to downplay him and disrespect him. But then once he finally retires, once it's over, these same people, that's when finally people will finally look back and realize, oh, wow, maybe I shouldn't, maybe I should have spent more time appreciating what he was. Because it was amazing. And quiet is kept. It's obvious Lamar's already the face of the league. At the end of the day, this was a guy who was already on the cover of Madden. This is a guy who, if you check the NFL's YouTube channel, they have multiple videos where they had the bar go out to Germany and basically be like an embra and and basically they had him be like an ambassador for the NFL as he did like a crossover with a, a popular soccer player out in Germany. I forgot the guy's name. If you guys have watched that video, I'm sure you have. They don't, they're not gonna have him do that. They're not going to have him do stuff like that if he isn't one of the faces of the league. They know he is. They try to suppress it because, really, they would prefer that Josh be that. But at the end of the day, what's undeniable is undeniable. Lamar Jackson, whether people want to give him credit for it or not, this is similar to a Michael Jordan story. I know people are going to say I'm crazy, but I'll say it like this. See, people forget that in the early part of Michael Jordan's career, he couldn't beat the Celtics or the the Pistons to save his life. He he, you know, not that he was not that he was bad, but thing whenever he played them, things kept going wrong, and they just they they just had his number for a period of for a period of time. But once he finally once he finally exercised those demons and got you know really knocked them out of the way, it was game over. It was game over. And coincidentally, Michael Jordan was able to finally get over that hump of the bad boy Pistons and, you know, reach the finals and all that in his seventh year, if I'm not mistaken. Was it, was it his seventh year? 
Yeah, he was drafted in like 80, what was that, 84? My bad, y'all. I got <laughs> I got to I got to think about this. Hold on. He was drafted in like 83, 84. I'm pretty sure it was like his seventh or eighth year. You get what I'm saying. Point is, around like his seventh or eighth or ninth year, that's when he finally broke that seal. And then once he once he got over that hump, it was a wrap. The Chiefs have been an issue, but guess what? When, not if, when we uh, break through that ceiling, get past that hump, get them out the picture. Listen, it's a wrap. It is a wrap. Well, my bad. Um, I, I didn't mean to go on a rant that long, but it is what it is. If you watch this long, I really appreciate it. I really do. Thank you for listening. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Do you think any of these media personalities are going to turn around and actually apologize to Lamar? Or do you think they're going to continue to make excuses for guys like Josh Allen when they get outplayed by Lamar?